Greetings to people on YouTube. Um, I am a watch collector. Uh, this is my first foray into making a video about watches. And so, if you will bear with me for a little bit, this is some time for me to get used to taking videos and talking about watches. But I started uh, buying watches, or I bought my first high-end watch in 1998. I bought a Rolex Air King and I just loved the uh, construction of it, the uh, craftsmanship, and the, uh, the workmanship involved and how well the, uh, the watch kept time. And uh, I've always been interested in watches, and, uh, but kind of lost interest in everything in life for a while in the uh, in the 2000s and call it a jokingly a dark period from uh, 2000 to 2009 where I didn't really do much of anything other than work and make money and exist and I realized uh, or re, re uh, found my interest in watches in 2009 started looking through some magazines and looking at uh, some Cartier watches and uh, some Rolexes and some Breitlings and other other higher end watches and I started uh, and buying some. I, I bought a Cartier Santos 100 which had an ETA movement in it. Um, I believe an ETA 2892 movement in it which is a fairly good quality ETA movement that's in a lot of watches. Um, the Cartier watch, that Santos 100, is a great looking watch and it, uh, um, I just fell in love with it. Um, but as I've, I've gone on and been able to uh, get more interested, get more knowledge and find out more about watches and started buying even some higher end watches, I've, I've been interested in movements that are more technically uh, superior to ETA movements uh, and a little more interesting and uh, just wanted uh, to, uh, to talk and share about those movements. So in making these videos, the first thing I thought I would do is talk about watches that I own. Um, eventually, there are plenty of watches that I'm interested in that I am unable to own uh, due to financial considerations, and I will eventually talk about those watches too. But since I have these in my possession, I thought we could talk about these and, and go over some interesting characteristics of the watches that I have. And if people are interested in watching these videos, um, then I'll, I'll keep going with some stuff that, uh, even with, what, with watches that I don't own. Um, what we are looking at here while I have been rambling on is a Breguet reference 7727 chronometry watch which came out uh, or was first shown at Basel World in 2013 and it is a chronometer um, it is not COSC certified to my knowledge but that it Breguet claims that it actually has better uh, timing keeps better time than a COSC certified watch um, and it has two interesting characteristics to it. Um, it has a high frequency escapement and it has magnetic uh, pivots or um, basically what holds the balance staff in place are magnets which is something that's completely new because magnets have never been used in watches as a, and as as you all know, everybody who who's interested in watches, magnets have been bad for mechanical watches. Um, the components of watches in the past have been made of steel or other th or other things that are affected by magnetism. And the balance wheel and the uh, balance spring, um, if they come in contact with a magnet, it would affect the rate and oscillation of the balance wheel and of the hair spring. And affect that that uh, the watch's uh, timing and its uh, uh, its rate. So with the advent of silicon components, Breguet has come out with watches, and they've been using silicon in watches for years now, where they've made the hairspring and the balance wheel and the pallet fork and and the entire escapement out of silicon, which is not affected by magnets. 
um, they can actually put a magnet in this watch that actually creates a magnetic field and actually helps with timing performance and helps protect the escapement from shocks that the watch might incur while we are wearing it. Um, the other interesting thing about this, I already mentioned, is the high frequency escapement. Um, that has nothing to do with the magnets. Um, this particular watch has two hairsprings in it. It's uh, two silicon hairsprings that are uh, placed at 100, 180 degrees to each other. So when one is contracted, one is expanded, and I think that add, uh, that helps um, oscillate the balance wheel at a frequency of 72,000 beats per hour. Um, which equals 10 hertz, which is uh, a pretty high frequency for an escapement. Most of the watches I've bought prior to this have had a frequency of 4 hertz, which is 28,800 uh, beats per hour, and there are some uh, plenty of watches at 3 hertz and 3.5 and hertz, depending on what, uh, um, what they are doing or what their function is. But uh, that most of your watches that you're going to buy that are mechanical are going to be... Um, uh, 4 hertz or lower. There is Zenith, who's a company that has the El Primero movement that is a 5 hertz movement that uh, is a uh, uh, stopwatch movement that, uh, that they've had out for years that runs at 36,000 beats per hour and it's an excellent movement and it's been put in other watches other than Zenith. It even was in the Rolex uh, Daytona for a little while before Rolex came out with their own uh, uh, movement for the Daytona. And that was their high, uh, higher frequency movement. But you don't see a lot of watches that, that run at 72,000 beats per hour. So, this is in the classic line and We'll try not to have too much glare from the lighting. I'll have to get a little better with my filming capabilities here, but we'll work on that with time. And this is a classic case, and all the classic lines have pretty much the standard case. You're going to have the coin edge on the case band, and you're going to have the welded lugs that you can see here. And one of the nice things in some of Breguet's newer watches they have is they have an extra screw down here where my thumb is to keep the uh, uh, the lugs in place and keep the pin that keeps the uh, the strap on from from loosening. So these screws on the side, even if they uh, uh, loosen, at least this one loosens here. This one's not going to loosen because you've got this screw in here, and that's a nice added feature. As I said, this is a 7727. It is a manual wind movement. Um, it's got a power reserve of 60 hours, which you can see right there, um, with the power reserve meter down uh, with its base at 5 o'clock. And then you can see here is the escape wheel that is beating at 72,000 beats per hour, which is pretty fast. I'm going to show another watch here um, that, it, just for comparison, this is a Glashute Original Senator chronometer, which I will talk about in depth at a later time, but I just want to show, and I hope we can appreciate here, if I can get it in focus, there it is, okay. I don't know if we can appreciate that. This is 28,800 beats per hour. And it looks pretty fast too, so I'm not sure if we can tell the difference, but that is 28,800. And this center chronometer has a lot of interesting features about it too, and I'll talk about that at a later time. But I just want to show this escape wheel moving at that rate, so hopefully we can appreciate the 72,000 beats per hour of this 10 hertz frequency movement. And again, I'll see if I can get it back into focus here. And I think we can see, you, know, you can kind of see on the glass sheet, you can see the arms of the balance wheel, where in this you can't really see them because it's so fast, it's just a blur. And 
Um, I think the double, uh, the two silicon balance or hair springs um, help move this thing that much faster. The other thing about the magnets and the end stones um, that does help this is it decreases friction. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the balance wheel and the hairspring are made of silicon, so they're not affected by the magnets. But the balance staff, which runs perpendicular and through and holds the hairspring and the balance wheel, it is attached to one of the magnets on one end on the dial side, but is actually not attached to the other magnet on the, uh, on the movement side, and it's kind of floating there and that balance staff is actually made of carbon steel which is affected by magnetism and that is done on purpose because what Breguet has done is they've created a magnetic field around this balance staff so when the watch is moved or shaken and the escapement is jostled that that magnetic field will push the balance staff back into place and keep it in position and basically it's kind of a protective cushion uh, around the the watch and what it also does is when the watch is in any position whether it's dialed down up sideways whatever that that magnetic field will always push that escapement to be right in the same place because the magnetic field is consistent and constant around it no matter what position the watch is in and that's kind of a neat, interesting feature to this. Um, the other thing is, is with the balance staff not being attached at one end, it reduces friction, and that helps reduce wear on the watch and allows that 72,000 beats per hour to occur without uh, just burning this thing out um, or just wearing out the parts because it's beating so fast. So here's the rest of the movement. This is some of the notations by Breguet. You got their little note about their patent there. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, the case is a classic case, and they want to keep the traditional things that are part of the classic line the coin edge case and the welded lugs. And then we also have the engine turn dial, and this particular watch has six guilloche patterns on the dial. Um, the dial is also made of 18 karat gold that's been silvered. Um, the most uh, classic watches have a dial made of gold unless the dial is enamel or some other special uh, uh, edition watch. But uh, the large majority of these watches have 18 karat gold dials that have been silvered and then engraved by hand. Um, there's not actually hand tools, but is a rose engine that somebody is running by hand and turning by hand to create these patterns um, that people have enjoyed and I particularly like. Uh, I think it's quite impressive and just adds to the beauty of the watch. Um, what we're looking at here at the 12 o'clock is you've got a sub-seconds dial and then you have inside of that a 1 20th of a second hand that shows basically on the dial side gives you an idea of what's going on with the movement. Um, that hand makes a rotation within two seconds so there's a dot at the top and the bottom um, so it's one, two and each little click because it's not completely smooth is one twentieth of a second. Um, this movement is capable of keeping time up to one twentieth of a second the first 10 hertz frequency movement that Breguet made was in a Type 22 um, uh, sports watch that does have a stopwatch function um, and that watch can keep time up to 1 20th of a second and it has the high frequency movement it does not have the magnets in the movement. The other thing I want to make a note of is you can see on here Breguet wanted to put that there was 10 hertz on the dial side and you can kind of see that here in very light gray um, and it is noticeable and it's legible but it doesn't just stand out. In the first iterations of this watch they put that or made that in red and it really stood out and a lot of people did not like that because they felt like it went against the classicism of the uh, classic watch style. 
Now, if you look at the Type 22, where they have the 10 hertz frequency, the 10 hertz little uh, notation is in red, which uh, I think fits that watch's style a little bit better. Um, I think there are some people who liked the red 10 hertz on this classic case. I particularly uh, like this better. I think it does fit with the aesthetic. I think what's neat about what Breguet is doing with these watches these days with the magnetic pivots and these silicon components is they are putting very high-tech materials and very new ideas about timekeeping into a very classically styled case and keeping to the traditions that A.L. Breguet had back in his day in the 1800s um, and the watches that he was making back then. And so you have this very kind of old style case, if you want to call it old style, or very classic style case. And you would look at some things on this case that you could see in watches that are a hundred years old and would have similar stylings, but then you have these magnetic uh, balance pivots and you have the silicon escapement and hairsprings, balance wheel, etc. Um, and you have this very high frequency movement um, that is uh, keeping better time for a mechanical wristwatch. Now obviously anybody who's interested in high-end watches knows that uh, you can buy a quartz watch or a Casio that could keep better time than this Breguet or any other watch that is out there. But what is kind of cool and why I think we get into this is, uh, or why I like it, is, is just the amazing artisanship, handwork, and uh, technology that comes into making a movement like this and making it look so beautiful and also putting the technology into it that makes it keep time at an excellent rate. Um, without using anything that's electronic or um, um, you know battery powered uh, just using a spring and some gears and things that could you know were uh, available hundreds of years ago um, obviously uh, the new materials that are available now help with the improved uh, timing performance and the ability to machine these parts at, at, at better specifications than before help with the improved timing performance but still, it's kind of cool that, you know, you've got this watch that is basically, uh, you got to wind it every day, and it still keeps time at an excellent rate, and it is on par with some quartz watches, um, and uh, it's just got a lot more work put into it uh, than, you know, stamping out a, 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 a quartz watch or a, a, a battery-powered watch. I think it's just a beautiful uh, piece of art here. So I think I've covered everything I want to cover. Um, I, if I've left anything out, you know, we can always come back to that. Um, I, hopefully people will watch this and make some comments, ask questions, and have some things that maybe I left out on my first run. As I said, this is my first video doing this, so... I'm sure, uh, you know, I hopefully will tighten up some of the, the monologue and, um, but the main thing I want to get across to this again is this is a, a very classically styled watch with very high tech materials and very innovative thinking about timekeeping and uh, which results in a watch that keeps time. Uh, at a very accurate rate that you do not have to reset the watch very often um, and it is I guess I should say some of the specs on the watch it's a 41 millimeter case the uh, case is 9.6 millimeters thick you can see the Breguet signature on the crown and um, I'm not going to talk money because that's not what I am here to do I just want to talk about the the, uh, the specifications and the performance of the watch. Um, as far as what I am interested in these days in watch collecting, um, 
what I am able to collect and what I'm interested in is chronometers that have interesting materials or uh, uh, functions such as this Breguet uh, chronometers with silicon or, or uh, that, that glass chute I showed you earlier which has an interesting function that I will talk about in a later video. I'm also interested in world timers and GMT watches which I have a couple of those that I will show. So I'll make a couple videos uh, in the future of the watches that I own and talk about those and talk about those interesting characteristics of those watches. Hopefully you guys will have some questions that I can come back and re-show some of these watches and talk about them again of things I've missed or holes that you all point out that I have not uh, um, uh, or things that I have not spoken of that you guys would like me to speak of. And then eventually once I run through every watch that I have I will uh, start talking about watches that interest me that either I, uh, I can't afford and or there are plenty of watches that interest me that I don't necessarily think I'd like to wear um, but still have a lot of, of interesting characteristics to them and I'll put those videos out there too so I hope you guys will enjoy that. So again the Breguet 7727 chronometry manual wind movement back out of this a little bit so we can see so I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will uh, post something probably on that glass chute or another piece uh, in the near future uh, thanks for watching